Thank you. Thank you, Ebony. I didn't uh, time out my slides, so I'm going to do the fancy thing and get my stopwatch out on my phone. Oh, great, thanks. <laughs> Uh, th thanks for having me here at Gildit. My name is Jeff Harshbarger. I'm a musician, composer, producer, educator, and radio host here in Kansas City. I do about 300 performances a year, uh, domestically and abroad, from clubs to concert halls and major festivals. I perform with a wide variety of ensembles ranging from solo work and small groups all the way up to big bands and full orchestra. Uh, and I really enjoy a vast wealth of diversity in the kinds of music that I get to make. So, for example, instead of the greatest hits of, of my life, I thought I'd just put up, these are some stills and photos of uh, work that I've done in the past month. And that includes uh, completing a three-month residency at the Blue Room, uh, had a, a great performance of Argentinian tango music with the uh, Bacari soloists, premiered some new music with Brad Cox at the Kansas City Contemporary Music Festival. Uh, my group, the People's Liberation Big Band, performed a uh, live score to the old Russian film Battleship Potemkin at Music Theater Heritage. I also dropped some tracks for the premiere album of uh, Marcus Lewis's uh, new hip-hop big band, The Brass and Bougie Project. Got some touring in as well, uh, played in Tulsa with singer-songwriter uh, Jesse Aycock and Lauren Barth. Uh, top right is uh, the, the door of the venue of my latest CD release. It was two weeks ago at New Blue in New York City, uh, a free improvisation collective I have called Unanimity. And then over the weekend, uh, I was in San Francisco. That top middle there, uh, the gentleman in the blue, his name is Perna Bengare. He is a virtuoso carnatic uh, violinist. And he's also one of the world's most respected mathematicians. He wrote a new equation that he's using to develop a new music theory of, of Hindustani music. Um, so we went to San Francisco to present the equation as a formal theorem presentation at the, uh, the uh, Mathematic Scientific Research Institute and then uh, played the piece for all the eggheads there. And then we went over to the Asian Museum in San Francisco the next day and uh, performed at as part of the Divine Bodies uh, exhibit that was just really, really fantastic. Um, Perna's music is something I've never experienced before, and if you'd asked me two years ago if I'd be playing modern mathematical Indian music, I would be, no. <laughs> uh, but here we are, and, and kind of the theme of, of my work life is just to say yes to the thing I haven't done before. Uh, it keeps me learning and keeps me fresh, and it gets me out of the house pretty fast. I'm also a curator of an or, of a, of an event series called Jeff Harshbarger Presents. It's a twice monthly concert at the Record Bar, focusing on new and improvised music. It's the home of the People's Liberation Big Band in Kansas City, and I've also been using it as a way to bring in visiting artists from abroad to collaborate with local improvisers. So some great concerts with Tatsuya Nakatani, Alan Ferber, Mike Dillon, Allison Miller, and that's been a lot of fun for about 12 years now. I'm also an educator. I'm an jazz professor of bass over at Kansas University, and I do a lot of workshops and clinics around the country throughout the year. I'm getting into more larger scale installation work. I really like what I consider site-specific composition. So conceiving of music in it for a singular event, and I'm really not concerned if they get recorded or documented. It's more about like inhabiting a space and feeling the molecules in the air do what they do when I'm collaborating with a visual artist or an architect. Uh, the most recent one, uh, I premiered a piece called A Shepherd's Path at the Charlotte Street Foundation's uh, Times Not uh, Remembering, list, Times Not Listening, excuse me. Uh, it was a piece designed to try to get people inside of uh, what I was hearing in my head. I had an illness a few years ago uh, that left me hallucinating a bunch of music, a bunch of guitar chords over and over again for a couple of months. And so I wrote them out and decided, let's wonder if I can possibly make an audience uh, have that experience. So uh, in the Folly it was where I designed the, the piece, that's where the concert was. So I took advantage of the natural architecture of the building. We closed off the balcony to the audience and I set up 13 guitarists and 
seven mechanical drones upstairs at a very low volume. And it's a very uh, repetitive, slow, uh, methodical, meditative piece. Drop the lights super low. Um, and once you, the sound waves kind of got bouncing around the room, I had all the amplifiers pointing at the ceiling and pointing at the wall in different spots to get all these cross waves happening. And once things finally floated around off the stage and then down into the audience, uh, it, actually, it actually worked. The effect was this massive sound. You didn't, it was low enough in volume, you really didn't know if it was coming from without or within your own ears. So that's the kind of installation work I've really been into lately. Bigger things like this take a lot of money and a lot of time. Um, we all know as artists that we're rarely compensated for the kind of time that we put in to even you know, properly conceive of one of these things, much less pay for the instruments that we've bought and just the, the basic day-to-day -day sundries of just keeping your stuff together. And there are a lot of, ticket sales never ever pull it off for this stuff. And there are a lot of grants and a lot of wonderful foundations, but almost all of them require 501c3 status. So if you're not affiliated with one of those organizations, it can be difficult to acquire enough grant funding. Uh, a lot of people go the individual route with Fractured Atlas, but guys like that take a cut, as do most crowdsourcing. So I've started a new nonprofit with Brad Cox and Matt Otto and Marcus Lewis. And the, the new and improvised music foundation of Kansas City is focused on Kansas City-based compositions and recordings um, we are a pass-through organization where we'll get the grants, and if we're into your project, we'll give you the money, and we don't take a cut. So um, there'll be a website at the end that you can take a look at. Yeah, there it is. Um, my upcoming projects, uh, there's a list of things that are in the near immediate future on the left-hand side there. On the right, my basic goals that I kind of want to um, punch up a little in the next couple of years. I want to increase my international touring. It's my favorite thing that I do. I love playing in other countries, and I've, I have this, uh, I don't have very many goal posts. I'm, I'm not really a, a metrics, get this done by this time kind of guy. But one of the things I do have is I've always tried to play in more countries than years I've been alive. And I've, I've held on to that. I'm still doing it. It's getting harder. I've done all the easy ones. Uh, so if anyone's got any suggestions or some contacts at some far flung places, I'm totally down for it. Uh, some of these acts that I've mentioned earlier, I think are well positioned with new recordings that are coming out, specifically the Perna Loca Quartet with the Indian music, the two singer songwriters from Tulsa, uh, and, and just a couple other things that I've got going on. I, I'm really hopeful for the near future. Uh, the Unanimity Project, the, the CD release we just had, those guys are hooked up with the Greek consulate and uh, with a couple festivals in Slovenia. So those are linchpin gigs that we're trying to hang on to. If we get one of those, then we can translate that into a lot more work in Southern Europe. And one of the ways to do that is to bring those groups back here and get some Midwest touring where it's a little cheaper, it's a little more affordable, and I can get some video documentation to send that abroad to promoters. I also want to expand my pool of collaborators and just constantly looking out to help have my language mix up with someone else's language. It makes me stronger. Uh, I really enjoy it. And I've never done a solo recording. I've never got anything out with my own name on it. I've been involved in dozens of other groups and, and worked for hundreds of other people. But I've, and I've always used that as an excuse of, I'm too busy. I'll get to me later. The other big issue is that I just like too many things. And I can't pick what I want to do. So if I wanted to make, like, the record that represented what I'm listening to right now, I'd have to borrow all your iPads. <laughs> and, and it'd, be, it'd be really, really big, and no one's going to buy that. So I really don't know how to whittle away at picking and choosing. But I do know it's time. Uh, I'm in my early 40s, and not having done one yet, I'm, I'm feeling that gnawing uh, on, on spiritually. It's like, I got to get this done. I got to knock one out, even if I don't let anybody hear it. I just got to do one. Uh, my needs, the financing for the nonprofit, we're at that stage where we've already produced a couple of concerts this year. And we're working on our season for next year. So we're gonna a big push. We've finally got a website going on and, and uh, trying to reach out to some people that we know that are interested in this kind of non-for-profit work. 
Uh, also, the financing for these recordings that you see on the left-hand side, all that stuff's crazy expensive. And one of the nice things is the non-for-profit and the recordings can work hand-in-hand. -hand. They can help each other out. So that's where I'm hoping they can cross-collateralize their trajectory. I want to be a lot more visible outside of Kansas City. It is an amazing place. And, and if you, you know, we can all afford space and time and energy here, but uh, there also seems to be a gravity well of, uh, of things that are built here very rarely escape, and it's really difficult for them to escape in a bigger fashion. So I'm taking small trips uh, here and there. I'm going to the other cities, I'm meeting other people and sitting in with other folk. And I'm bringing other people in to sit in with my groups here and to learn my music and our language of improvisation from this town in hopes that we can create a web that something will escape and, and something will grab someone else's attention. And the last thing is, Everyone needs new marketing, and I really needed a website. I've been using the same piece of crap Dynamod thing for about 14 years, and I just don't even like looking at it anymore. So if anyone's got any suggestions on an easier, better thing that's got some e-commerce and some stuff that doesn't take all of my life so I can get back to writing stuff, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Comments, questions, feedback. Google. It's so easy. Okay. It's, it's a small fee a month, and it, your calendar, it's all just like you want to make a new event, and you hit the new event, and then you put in the information, and it looks beautiful. And yeah. it's, you know, load a video or, you know, load your tracks, and then you, it has a whole merchandise thing. They don't take a cut. You're nice. paying this, like, I think it's like 15 bucks a month, and uh, it, it looks good. How, how much space is on it? How much stuff do you have up? Um, I have like about five different pages, shows about, you know, my bio, the, the splash page, which you can have a button right on the front page that says hereby, you know. Right. Um, and it's just like, it's made my life so much easier. And how much media? Like how many videos uh, or? I don't, I don't know exactly what it's like. sure. it, it seems to hold a lot. Uh, what do you need to do with your website? Oh, I probably need more media on it. I'm, right now I'm limited to just two or three clips and, and it's not representative of what I've got going on anymore. Do you have another platform like if you use Band, uh, Bandcamp or, or SoundCloud or any of those things, you know, you can link all of that onto your website so right. it doesn't even have to hold it all, right. you know, but it will you know, upload a widget or something and it'll look fancy and cool. <laughs> press on it and then it'll play from your website so that it doesn't even out of your website to get to these other streaming platforms. So, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, I back here. One moment. We're recording, so please speak in the mic. Thank you. Um, great presentation. You seem to be doing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, how, do you, how are you right now splitting your time between, you know, performances, composing, um, getting the nonprofit off the ground, like how how does your I guess your day look in splitting all these things up? Well, I cut out things like sleep and laundry <laughs> and exercise. Uh, no, um, I kind of look at it as uh, oh, my friend Bo Bledsoe has a really great analogy for this. It's like it's like you're cooking on a stove that's got like six burners. And the, the big burner up front that's the hottest is the one that's your immediate need. And then you're just sort of sh trading things around from burner to burner. It's like the, so I, I do feel like I've got enough going on that my personal practice time suffers, like my personal exploration of music and fun. I feel like I'm doing a lot of triage practice. Just like, oh crap, this is tomorrow? Oh, I get to learn seven songs now, okay. and. and it's fine, I've got the skills that I can do it, but it's not fine because I'm not, uh, it's, it's a rarity that I actually get to play by myself for myself. It's always super goal-based and I, I'm really good at, at keeping at least a couple mornings a week where I'm not concerned about what's up next. So I do like get a half an hour here and a half an hour there where I'm just goofing off on the bass. Like, what's the best rhino sound I can find? Or what's some really old, sad song that I don't remember anymore that I want to remember? Like, that's kind of the process. Other questions, 
to college. Does anyone have a new country that Jeff can go to? <laughs> that, um, he may not have, I mean, he's, he's been places, but. Uh, <laughs> Say again? I hear things are relaxing. Yeah. Here's a, now, here's what you said about trying to figure out how to, well, what I heard was that we need to focus your energy for. Mm -hmm. And so, strategically, I think, this becomes about looking five years out. Right. Saying, what, what do I want my life to look like in five years? What are the things that are most important that five year region? I'm just going through that exercise. I've already done that before. You probably have a set of five year goals. I'm sure. But it's like doing that at the end and just kind of figuring out what, you, what isn't going to take you in that direction. Right. And those are the things I would say. You might be enjoying them, but they're not going to take you where you want to be. Right. You just have to stop. It's not necessarily stop doing them, but stop making them. You know, that's time that pot is done. It's time to move off the stove for a while and see what's your end is. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, I mean, this is, you know, 10 years worth of work you have right up here on the, on the Right. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I need I need to dig out the oh, the last uh, sort of five year projection I did and just see if it's still even in line anymore. You know, I think our lives are fluid enough that I'm sure there's two or three things on there that I would look at and go, oh no, those are terrible ideas. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> right, right. Let's see what actually got knocked off. Anyone have any possible connections for help with financing his new nonprofit organizations or? Can you leverage the UNESCO? Right. by UNESCO, and uh, I mean, I don't even know what that entails exactly, but it, it seems like a big thing. There's a, there's a UNESCO network all over the world. Right. Uh, that's something we thought about. I haven't even made that connection yet. Thank you. I've got to look into that. That might be a way to, to me to get to a couple countries I haven't been to, too. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. because there are music heritage sites. Not yet, but we're the only one in the United States, actually, in yeah. the city here. Yeah. But there's some, you know, Europe, Asia, and South America, and yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay, other feedback or comments for Jeff? No countries? No new countries that uh, you didn't just heard of? I will say, okay, I haven't totally looked at this website, but uh, a fellow KKF fire, Maria Vasquez Boyd, yeah. um, she's presented here at Yoda and also uh, uh, volunteers at the station and I put one of them. She just told me about Lonely Planet, lonelyplanet.org, I think. Right. And they have all these different destinations and different places you can look into and see what's going on there. So that may be, uh, she says she uses it, so that may be a, a nice website to browse and see if it has Yeah, I bought a couple of their travel books last time I was traipsing around Spain, I think. Uh, they were really great doorstops, like, like, did the job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I do think your observation that the gravity well is really interesting. But I actually think you're already doing what we need to look out of that gravity well. With the 
it just hasn't happened yet. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long slug doing it that way. But, you know, and if you're doing that and you turn to other artists to do that, <coughs> yeah, that it seems to me that you're on exactly the right track. That the way to work that part of space time yeah. is exactly the kind of thing that you're doing. So I really encourage you to keep on with that. I mean, things that go in front of us go to a cat. That's awesome to think about how you saw me like that from here and put for here. I mean, from my perspective, I mean, what, what, that observation has always been true. Mm -hmm. But the space time continuum, as if that's the case, has changed in the last year, or last, not the last, the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. The city is way better now than it used to be. And it's being known more and more to the, the arts and culture here. You know. Right. And that is to regather the mass we need to kind of bend the universe in our direction. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty exciting to see. I, I will have to agree with you on that. As, when I first started traveling, um, I remember my first gigs in New York, guys are like, where are you from? I'm like, Kansas City. I'm like, oh man, that's nowhere. And then I would say, just, I mean, maybe just five years ago, uh, the, the question comes up, where are you from? I was like, Kansas City. I was like, ah, oh, I hear it's kind of happening. I hear y'all got clubs. I hear you got places to play. You know, it's like, yeah, we certainly do. And, and dudes that can play in it. You know, and it's, a, it's a vibrant musical scene right now in many different genres. It's really, the talent pool is getting deeper all the time. And I think that is the beginning. That that's the pool that that the everything else has to grow out of. It's just long. Yeah. You know, Jack, we have we're doing this. What are we at? Thirty years now, Luis and the Francis Family Foundation, as far as grants, you know, um, mm -hmm. grant support of the Kaufman Foundation. Yeah. Uh, you may want to take a look at. It. The criteria and qualifications for levels, but they've been supportive to virus to get us off the ground as well. That's great, yeah. yeah. Other comments, questions? I haven't done Norway. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, totally down. Okay, well, as a final wrap-up, um, oh, well, I do want to say, um, for your first album release, is that, mm. of, your, of your all the original material, yeah. is that, does that tie into your lack of time to pursue personal growth? Like, it, is oh, yeah. a goal of yours, but the lack of time to pursue per personal growth is that? Yeah, absolutely. Passion. Yeah. So, were, are you contemplating stopping a project or two here or there in order to fulfill that goal? I mean, I've I've done that before. Uh, I, I had a giant purge once. I had a, I had a great uh, residency in uh, Seaside, Florida. I did the Escape to Create, um, and I can't recommend it enough. It's really fantastic. But. Uh, and coming back from it, I quit half the things I was in, like immediately on the drive home. And now I've gotten up to this critical mass again. But the difference is back then, everything I quit, I, I hated. Um, it was easy. Uh, here, now, I really love everything I'm doing. And I love everyone I'm playing with. And it's, I feel like the luckiest musician in the world. Uh, it's really amazing. So to not do one of those things is just thinking of that is actually quite painful. And I'm artistically very greedy. I want to do all the things, and I don't like watching someone else have my fun. <laughs> like coming back from San Francisco, I had to sub out a gig with the Brad Cox Octet, which I'm a founding member of. And I went um, because I knew the plane was going to get delayed and it was going to get messed up. So I went and watched my own band play out my own series at the record bar for that last set. And, and I only ground down a couple layers of my teeth. It was great. Yeah. They sounded great. That didn't help.
I do. I do. Uh, just as a side note, I heard an artist say she had a, she wanted to go into directing more, and um, she did. She said I didn't give up the thing that I love the least. I just gave up the thing that took the most time. Right. That didn't allow me to then go and pursue this directing thing that I really wanted to do, even more so than that. You know. Yeah. Which I mean, it's still difficult because. That's one of the things she was discussing. I mean, I love doing this. I really loved it, but it took so much time that it didn't mean allow me to do this other new thing that I really wanted to explore as well. So yeah, that's that a it's a rough way. That is a very adult decision that I'm loath to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very mature. That is, that is happening, it's in the works. We have, well, we've been sketching, uh, that's another project from the People's Liberation Big Band. Uh, Brad Cox and I, and I think we're gonna invite one other composer, are gonna, we're gonna recut the, uh, the, the movie. This is its 50th anniversary. And that movie is an anomaly in film because it's public domain. Someone, one of those things where someone forgot to put a form in on time, I'm not kidding. And so that's why you haven't seen this crazy Night of the Living Dead franchise and, and all this monetization of their 50th anniversary because like no one can make money off it. Once something's in the public domain, it's there forever. And anyone can mess with it. So we're gonna mess with it. <laughs> the, no, we are writing a new score. We're writing a new live, and we're gonna perform it live to the film. You're gonna cut the film, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get. Uh, when we did Battleship Potemkin, we found a really good edit uh, that had some missing footage put back in, and and, and we just did it straight. We, we we wrote our own soundtrack to it. This time, I think we want to mess around with it a little more. Uh, I, I think Night of the Living Dead is an amazing film. It's very prescient. Has a lot of themes in it that are very useful today. But it's also there's a pacing issue. And with the kind of music that we're considering making, I think it's going to help if we do some uh, creative license. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, with that, just as a final question for you as well, Jeff, what can we as a community do to help support you in your first solo recording or some of your upcoming projects? or anything, maybe go back and look up some new countries and you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what can we do as a community to help you get away? Um, I'd love to get the word out a little bit more about um, what we're doing at the Record Bar, the Jeff Harshbarker Presents series. Um, that I, I think if, uh, what I've learned over the years with it is um, by having the first Sunday of every month be the big band, and the third Sunday of the month, I always had a, a rotating showcase idea. My attendance on the third Sunday was never as good as the attendance for the steady gig. And so that was an interesting lesson to learn. And now I'm, I've got it where it's mostly these two big bands on the first Sundays and mostly the Brad Cox Octet on the third. When something special does come along, I want it known that it's something really, really unusual. So I love that thing to have a little higher profile. And the other is to um, get a little higher profile for this new nonprofit. It's really new, so no one's heard of it yet. Any help that I can have to let composers know that there is a music-specific uh, nonprofit pass-through for them to access would be very helpful. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you.